Oh, hello everybody. One of the uh, comments in one of the uh, recent videos, uh, somebody said they had one of these chargers. It's a 12 volt, 4 amp, two stage, three stage charger, three LEDs on the front. It's called Simply, uh, a Simply, Simply something or other. Yeah, so the spec is 80, 230, 240 volts, 50 hertz, charging capacity 12 volt, 2.8 amps. Maximum four amps, battery capacitor fifteen fifty amp hour. Okay, that's fine. Um, what's the model number on it? Maybe it's on the actual charger itself. Let's get it out of the box anyway. I mess about. So why I bought this was that a was I thought well yeah maybe there is a really good cheap charger out there which would do some people a favour if they want to buy something so I'll take it and try it. So here it is, and I'll just give you the model number because I don't remember what it is. It's an SBC4, SBC4, right? And uh, C marked, W insulated. I'm not sure what that means. Indoor only, not for use outdoors, presumably. And uh, ROHS wheelie bin, so you can't throw it in the wheelie bin without recycling. So it's a nice molding, nice solid thing. It's heavy. Clearly got a transformer inside. It's an old fashion type battery charger and I thought yesterday what I'll do I'll just connect it up to that Halfords battery which I've got on the bench there which had been discharged and we know this battery quite well by this stage because we've charged and discharged it and play around with it for something like 14 charges I think wrong. And so here it is but I thought before I um, send it back I would just take it apart and we can have a look at what's inside for what it's worth get in there and um, take her drawers off and see what she's got in there So, so let's have a look inside her. Okay, so what have we got here? We've got a transformer, as expected. And, if, oh, look at that. Looks to me as though it was designed for a bigger transformer. Can you see the size of the transformer support inside the case? Well, they've obviously downgraded it at some point and fitted a cheaper or smaller transformer which sounds very typical for some countries that do manufacture things. And what we got? Yeah, horrible piece of soldering there, look. Yeah, very nasty <laughs> sparrow shit soldering dumped on from high altitude on the electronics board. Otherwise, quite nice quality, really. There's a little bit of wire stuck in the transformer here, look. A bit of spare wire. Um, left over from the manufacturing process which they missed yeah, a bit of extra wire left inside the case so let's take this electronics board off and see what we've got So there we have standard, fairly chunky bridge rectifiers, the PTC SR3400. SR30 is a, a overcurrent PTC fuse. When the current going through this gets to a certain level, the self-heating makes it, it's a polymer fuse and it goes open circuit. So we'll look up the 400 series and we can work out what current. So that's protect the thing from short circuit. This will heat up and effectively go high impedance and stop any current being driven into the transformer. I don't know if it's a thermal overload for the transformer. Most of these transformers of this type usually have an over temperature fuse built in and wound into the actual windings themselves, but we're not going to test that. But we assume for the sake of safety that they have put such a overheating uh, protection in the transformer, but you know, who can say? And all you've got really is um, three paths. You've got uh, two different LEDs going to two diodes and the third diode has got a 13 volt Zena and a resistor in series with it so this won't start conducting and turn the final LED on until you've got 13 volts plus the voltage forged voltage drop of the uh, diode and as it's, uh, it's a green diode so it'll be one and a half to two volts okay so it'll be at 14 and a half volts this light will come on or start to come on but uh, bear in mind this is rectified a uh, DC so we've got a hundred 
pulses per second, inverted sine pulses being driven in. So this will come on somewhat before because it's not there's no reservoir capacitor in here. So this is raw rectified DC. We'll have a look at that later. Okay, so that's all that's in there. Transformer, this rectifier diode, and then three uh, resistor chains, one with a diode in to change the indicators on the front. So it's not a three-stage charger, it's a three-light charger, so that's the first thing. So their marketing claim is completely wrong. It's just an old-fashioned conventional uh, charger. So what to do next? The best thing to do, what I think I'm going to do it, with this is to put it on the test rig and just run it through and you can see the current it can deliver at different voltages and whether it is a 4 amp charger or whether it's less and just see how it performs and then we will charge this uh, Uesu stroke Halfords HBC012 battery we've been experimented with if you want to see the history of this battery then you have a look at the series of videos there's a playlist which is called Noco Genius 5 in which we test this battery with several different charges in the regeneration mode to see whether we can actually improve the amp powerage or not but at the moment we're just going to put it onto charge and then we'll cut to the computer now and have a look at the actual charge waveform that we got from it or the charge characteristics we got from it so that's the uh, the waveform on this uh, traditional transformer rectified bridge rectified charger this is the current in the current probe um, and this is the voltage here okay so that line there represents the standard 14.96 volts and see when it starts to conduct at the top of the AC cycle it goes up uh, about 1.3 divisions 1.2 divisions 1.2 times 500 it's probably at 750 millivolt peak pulse voltage across the terminal so the terminals are driven up during this charge um, to 14.95 RMS but it's actually going higher peak because of the fact that this is an RMS uh, reading we're getting on the Yokogawa power meter okay now you can see there's the current there look and uh, let's see at the current we've got a current peak of uh, this is zero and was that zero that must be zero yeah so that little peak there that bit there represents that's where the voltage that's where the current's flowing and that little peak there is RMS uh, 520 milliamps so but you can see it's one uh, it's about uh, 1.2 2 3 so it's probably about 30 percent mark space ratio there so the peak current is much higher actually we should be able to measure what that peak current is shouldn't we by Putting it on channel one. Oh, channel one. Oh, let's change hands. Sorry, this is a bit scrappy, but it's a bit might find it interesting. And we go down to there, <coughs> and we've got one division of 500 millivolts. So that's a that peak current there is five amp peak. Okay, but it averages out to 530 milliamps DC RMS. All right. So it's a 5 amp peak, so it's giving a 5 amp peak every uh, 20 milliseconds. No, 10 milliseconds, because it's bridge rectified AC mains. So that's where we're at. I don't know what you can make from that, but it's a different approach to reconditioning. But that's what a, an old fashioned tra traditional battery charger without, with um, 100 hertz rectified mains in it uh, will do. So we'll find out what happens. OK, so we've got 15.25 uh, volts. Been like that for a couple of hours and 26.4 amp hours have gone into the battery and we've been integrating for 26 hours and 25 minutes so 26 hours 25 minute charge so i'm going to switch it off and stop it there yeah so here's the graph of the simply sbc4 conventional charger we just broke open charging uesu halfords hbc012 battery now what i didn't mention was that I've had a number of YouTube viewers from the other series of videos about this battery saying that we think that a cheap conventional charger with a transformer and bridge rectifier would do a better, as good a job or a better job than a smart charger, especially on a battery which is slightly worse for wear, i.e. the performance has dropped, and that this method would intrinsically do a degree of desulfation during the charge. Now, 
with a maintenance free battery you can't leave one of these connected because it will boil it dry and it won't do the battery any good and it's not recommended it's not a good idea so if you do use this type of battery charger for this purpose you have to keep an eye on it especially if you've got a maintenance sealed lead acid battery never mind the whole thing was only 17 pounds so we can't expect too much but we just want to see whether well answer the question of the youtube viewers of the channel uh, as to whether this does a more effective or as an effective job as the smart expensive type chargers like the uh, Noco and the Genius, sorry, the Noco and the C-Tech type chargers. So here we have it. We've got old amps up here. I've got the legend amp hours, volts, and current. So you've got the blue is the amp hours, the red is the battery terminal voltage, and the green is the current, the charge current. So this battery had been discharged to 10.8 volts. It was pretty flat. And this is from switch on. So the charger starts here and we start immediately with a battery voltage of, buying that to settle, 11.91. But within within a you know a minute or something, we reach 12.3 volt volts. 12.3 volt volts. And the peak current that's come out of this on this flat battery is 1.77 amps. Is there any higher current than that? 1.79 amps. So not 4 amps for a normal battery, 1.7 amps, so it's a 2 amp charger, probably. But we'll do this test with the test rig, and we'll take the voltage down to, say, a safe 7.5, and then quickly run through the charging cycle with the LEDs, and you can see what the LEDs do at different voltages. So if you've got one of these, then you will know what's going on. The other thing to be aware of is that this is a mains-powered unit with no regulation or feedback in the power supply, so... If the voltage on mains goes in by 10%, then the charge voltage will go up by 10% at the transformer, at the crop clips where it clips onto the battery. So it is somewhat beholden to the stability of the mains. I get some days 268 volts. The spec is 230 plus 10 minus 6. So it could go up to 260. So you can get 10% more or 6% less, so the spread of charge currents could be up to 16%, depending on the you know, current voltage characteristics of the, the, the load on the battery. But I set this to 240 volts exactly with a stable power supply, regulated AC power supply, so that it would give uh, stable readings. And you can see here, look, the current down here on the green line just goes along, and <clears throat> by the time we reach something like here somewhere, 13.6, 13.7 volts, we've got a current of 1.28 amps. And you can see the current, as the battery voltage rises, this is the amp hour we're putting into the battery. You can see the voltage on the battery rising. You can see the variations in the main slightly. And then it comes down and ramps down and kind of levels off down here somewhere at 0.43 amps. So that's 430 milliamps. And we cross the 15 volt line about here somewhere there so go to there so 490 milliamps and it kind of stays there constantly and it it was on for 26 and a half hours this battery and at the end i decided to turn it off because the battery voltage wasn't rising and it topped out at 15.29 so it's 15.29 where it topped out after 26 hours of charging and we pushed into the battery 26.34 amp hours, which is more than any of the other chargers have. So this should do something for our battery, okay? So that's that. I can't think of anything else to say about this. It's pretty much as expected. It's not a two or three stage charger. It's a standard conventional transformer bridge rectifier driven charger with three LEDs fudged onto it to give some kind of indication of what's going on. So let's have a look at the current readings on the test system and see what we get. Okay, so let's run the utility. Uh, we'll load the, the test file I've just written. It's a straightforward voltage ramp test file for the Simply battery charger, starting at 7.5, ending 18 volts, 100 measurements, sorry, yeah, 100 measurements at 1,000 1, milliseconds, so it's a 100 second test. So without further ado, let's just run it and see what she does. You can see the LEDs and how they react during various stages of charge. You can see the LEDs as they react during various states of charge to see whether they give you any sort of reasonable indication as to what is going on with your battery. So here goes, we're going to run it now. 
So we're starting at 7.5 volts. We've got a current of 4.2 amps. But you can see any battery that spent any length of time with a terminal voltage below 10.5 is going to be ruined anyway. Badly damaged. So we really need to see what the 10.5 volt current is. Then this will give us the rating of the current for this charger. I suppose you'd call it a trickle charger. So we can up to 10.5 now. And we've got a current of about 1.8 amps, so it's really a 2 amp charger for any useful charging that's going to be done. You know, with the LEDs, the red LED, the one on the left, is really just a power LED. I don't think I've ever seen it go off. It just comes on as soon as the power goes on. Up to 12 volts now. We're charging at 1.2 amps. Yeah, so the next thing that's going to happen is the green light will come on. So keep an eye on for when that green light comes on and what voltage we're at at the time it happens. That's on a larger scale for you. You can see a little bit more clearly what's going on. Fifteen point five volts now. We're down to one hundred and twenty milliamps. Yeah, so the current is pretty much tending to zero, and it's finished. So by this point here, when the current goes to zero, we're at 16.5, something like that, volts. OK, so that's the test complete. There's the characteristics, the battery terminal voltage versus the charge current. OK, so in theory, you could get something like 16 volts out of this thing, but the current will be extremely low. So not a lot of good for desulfonation charging we're supposed to go to 15.5 according to some people I'm not advocating that because you should check with your battery and the battery type you've got to see whether it will damage it or not so that's that test so here we have the trusty results spreadsheet for the test that we've done and all of this spreadsheet has uh, evolved the seven, the 15 tests test 1 to 15 are covered in the Noco Genius 5 playlist on this channel. So if you're interested in this and how this works, I won't explain it again in detail, but it's a standard charge cycle we've been using on the standard battery and these are uh, using the normal charge and the reconditioning or repair charges of the various devices to see if we've got any improvement. And you can see they all hold around 21.66 to 21.75. So didn't really make any difference what we did. The battery gave more or less the same performance. Okay, so now this is a simply one charge 16, that one down here, and you can see it lasted 26.5 hours. We turned it off when it read 15.2 volts. Uh, it put in 26 amp hours of charge into the battery, which was much higher than any of the others. And in the standard discharge test, it did pretty pretty uh, badly actually it's given us the lowest score we've had or the lowest amp hour that we've seen minus 1.05 amp hours drop in capacity and a 4.8 percent reduction in amp hour capacity these these two are just calculated from the figures above so you can see there's all the sort of average values we've been getting but this so this 26.5 amp hour charge we gave the battery trickle charge with letting it run over and desulfonate has actually seems to have done worse. It's probably damaged our battery. So if you had wondered about a standard trickle charger type, a traditional charger reconditioning your battery, maybe you should think again. It doesn't seem to work. So in conclusion, it's a two amp, not a four amp battery charger. It isn't three stage. It's just a standard transformer battery charger with a few LEDs strapped on on a very crude circuit, but it is very cheap, so it will charge your battery. So anyway, if you can uh, subscribe to the subscribe button down in this corner and leave me a like, I'd appreciate that, and I hope you found that interesting.